Now today we're going to try to help you for those who are sincere, who are open-hearted, who really want to know the truth, but now there's a lot of confusion. So you might be catching us late at night, early in the morning, in the afternoon. You're away from all the different tantalizations of this life and you might have just came home from the nightclub, you're getting play, it's getting played out, you're getting tired of it. But now there's confusion. Where do you start? How do you find the truth? What's the road map? Where do you begin? So we're going to take baby steps. We're going to take simple steps. No matter what you did in the past, don't worry about it. There's still hope you're not dead yet. When we come back, we're going to be giving you a formula on how to find the truth, live on the truth, and die on the truth when we come back here on The Dean Show. This is The Dean the Assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto you. Salam, Eddie. Thank you. You seem a bit quiet today, man. Today, you know, uh, we're going to get excited as we go along, and, but this is a very serious issue. You know, we, we, we really we, we share because we care. We care about the people. We want the best for them. We certainly do. You know, there, there's a lot of, 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 of doubt that's created about us Muslims. Yeah, but you, you know, know, the Prophet said, none of you truly believe until you love for others what you love for yourself. And the thing that every Muslim, true Muslim, every true believer loves the most, without any doubt, is Islam. Yes. You know, a true believer would rather be thrown into the fire than to go back to that condition where they were without the guidance of Allah in their life. So that is how dear and how important, I mean, really in reality, Islam, it is life, Eddie. It's, it's, it's life on a totally different scale. And when you are not connected with your Lord, when you're not connected with your Creator, when you're not remembering Him, knowing Him, it, you might as well be dead. And I'm sure many people, they might have been involved in drugs or still are. Women might have been getting used by men and abused and going to the nightclubs and you know, living from Friday to Friday, work, work, party, party, make a little money, and then let loose. But now it's it just getting played out. It's getting played out, but there's still some doubt and confusion. They don't know. They don't have a road map. But now somehow they got tuned in to the Dean show. Mm. Maybe a Muslim got them to sit down, and they're yeah. thinking serious. So yeah. where do they begin? This is the first step, but where do they go from here? We want to give them some encouragement and some kind of formula that after this show, they'll be excited to live a new life. I think, you know, I, th I think the question, where do they begin, depends on who the they is. It depends on who's out there. And people are so different. Um, they're different in different ways. They're different emotionally. They're different intellectually. They're different spiritually. So, you know, a question like that is a bit like, well, how long is a piece of string? Well, which piece of string is it you're talking about? I mean, it's, it's, it's easy if you, you know, like we've talked about before, you, yeah. we talked about a specific example. Here's a character, he's like ABC. Yeah. You know, what do we say to him? What have we got to say to him? But I think, you know, you're talking about people coming. The, the question I really want to ask everyone out there. Please ask it. The people who have come back from nightclubs, the people who are playing it out, as you called it, I've never heard that expression <laughs> before, <laughs> coming from quaint old England. But, um, you know, but th the question I want people to really ask themselves is when you come back from a night on the town, you've been drinking, you've been boozing, you've been dancing, you've been hanging out with girls, guys, whatever. At the end of all, at the end of, all of that, when you wake up the next morning or whatever, whatever it is, I want you to ask yourself, I want those people to ask themselves two simple questions. Number one, did you improve yourself as a human being? When you go out on the night, uh, get, you go out on the town and you get drunk, would you say honestly, I'm a better human being because of that? Number two, 
did you contribute anything to the betterment of humanity? Because the reality is, Eddie, if you haven't improved yourself as a human being, and if you haven't contributed to the well-being of humanity, the amazing thing is, is that the most advanced studies in psychology about human happiness show that these are the two key factors in making people profoundly happy. I don't mean happy on a temporary scale where, yeah, man, I feel happy. I'm, you know, I'm a bit stoned. I'm a bit wasted. I'm a, you know, I just had some nice sex or whatever, right? Yeah. You feel, I mean, how long does that happiness last? It doesn't, you know, because the problem is this hedonism, this giving yourself into these so-called pleasures and luxuries of the life, they have no permanence at all. You know, the moment the actual experience has ended. The moment the alcohol has worn off, what's left, right? What have you got left? You've got nothing. And at the end of it, you don't feel I'm a better person. You don't feel humanity has improved because of what I've done. So how is that going to improve your feeling of self-worth? How is that going to make you feel better as a human being? It doesn't. And people reach a stage when they begin to realize that, maybe not consciously, maybe not intellectually, but they begin to realize that, wait a minute, I am achieving nothing. I am going nowhere. Where is all of this getting me? And this is actually a problem the whole society faces. Okay? The whole society is facing this, really, this big problem. Now, okay. the person who's listening and usually all he watches is MTV, the reality mm. shows, and he sees, let's say, Puff Daddy, and he sees him with all the glitz and glamour and all the women, and he's always smiling, having a good time, and now he feels like, you know what, I got a good voice, mm. I can sing, I can make it, I can be up there and I'll be happy. So mm. that's the only ambition he's got, but you know what, he sees us and he says, you know what, that seems boring what you're talking about, this is more exciting, it's where yep. it's at. Well, you know what, try it, you know? Go, if, if that's how that person feels, go for it. You'll see. You'll see how empty it is. You'll see how shallow it is. You see, there are some people who admit it to themselves. And there's some people who just keep fooling themselves. They just say, well, maybe I don't have enough women. Maybe I don't have enough money. Maybe I don't have enough drugs, right? And they just go deeper and deeper and, and into it more and more. But in reality, you don't find these people have any profound, profound sense of happiness. And the example, Eddie, uh, the examples are too many of, you know, whoever it may be, you know, Elvis, Kurt Cobain, how many of these people, right? How many of these people were taking drugs? The question I ask is, if you're happy, why do you take drugs? Why do you take drugs? You're why, if you're happy, why are you taking drugs? Yeah. You take drugs because you're not happy. If you're happy, why do you need to surround yourself with all of these women? Because you're not happy, right? If you have to fill your mind with all this music, which really takes over your brain waves, that's what it does. It, it takes over your brain waves. It, it, it makes you think and behave and act in a different way. So if you're so happy, why are you doing those things? One of the most important things in an orphan's life is a safe and secure home. The Orphan Village Project is building homes for a better tomorrow. This Avan is brought to you by Orphans in Need. Together we can build hope. عن أبي سعيد الخدري رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إذا سمعتم النداء فقولوا مثل ما يقول المؤذن On the authority of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, whenever you hear the adhan, say as the muaddin is saying.
اللهم رب هذه الدعوة التامة والصلاة القائمة آت محمدا الوسيلة والفضيلة وابعثه مقاما محمودا الذي وعدته إنك لا تخلف الميعاد. O oh Allah, owner of this perfect call and owner of this prayer to be performed, bestow upon Muhammad al wasila and al fadila and send him upon a praised platform which you have promised him. Verily, you never fail in your promise. This Avan was brought to you by Orphans in Need. Abu Huraira reported that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, The best house among the Muslims is the house in which orphans are well treated. Orphans in Need, building homes for a better tomorrow. one who taught this man Muhammad is the one who knows exactly the needs and the requirements of the human being he he because he is the creator of the human mind he's the creator of the human brain he knows our psychology better than we know ourselves and you know this is one of the remarkable things one of the remarkable things about uh, the Quran when you study it in Islam when you live it um, and this is what really we have to connect to we have to connect to this understanding that the Qur'an is from God, that Muhammad is his messenger, and the answers to the problems in our life are there. Snorting cocaine, taking drugs, drinking alcohol, womanizing, you know, these things are not solutions. But today we're talking, we're trying to give some kind of blueprint for a person. We're trying to create some urgency for the person to take this seriously. And right now he might be even having a a, a can of beer, a, a bottle of champagne, some, you, you, you got all sorts of things going on yeah. out there. But he's enjoying, she's enjoying what we have to say. She's getting fed up of feeling 
like she's just getting used and abused by all the men. Mm. One man after another. She thinks she's found Mr. Romeo. Mm -hmm. Next thing's she's getting kicked out of another car. And this Well, I mean, what do you expect? I mean, you know, you, you, you look at these, uh, you look at, you just turn on MTV. You look at these rappers. You look at these musicians. You look at these people with their string of women dancing around them like, I don't know what. I mean, this is misogynistic. This is woman hating, right? This is treating women just like sex objects. And the sad thing is these women just behaving yes. like they're just nothing more than just like, you know, little bits of decoration for these men. I mean, it's really sad to see that. It's sad to see men behaving like that, and it's sad to see women being treated like that. And I know the vast majority of women, not all of them, but most of the women out there, they want, they want a man who is going to support them, who is going to be with them, who's going to stay with them, who's going to love them, and who she can love back. This is the problem. We're being fed this rubbish. We're being fed this filth, you know. And, uh, you know, quite rightly, no, no media station, quite rightly, no media station would uh, be allowed to, you know, uh, to, to, to uh, encourage people to commit acts of terrorism, for example. Mm -hmm. How, how do we allow people to come on and sing about shooting other human beings, stabbing them, killing them, you know, a really what comes down to really abuse of humanity? I mean, how, how, how do we allow that type of stuff, you know? And I think, you know, the problem is, you know, we've, we, you know there's something they call in psychology existential angst, <laughs> you know, w which basically means is a fancy word for saying, we're lost. We don't know what's the purpose of life. We don't know why we're here. Mm -hmm. What's it all for, right? We've just given, given ourselves up to this hedonism, sex, drugs, rock and roll, right? Bread and circuses. It happened with the Romans. You look at the history of the Roman Empire. These people just surrendered themselves to like display after display of bloody gore, animals killing each other, gladiators, this and that. They were spending all their money. The whole of the resources of the empire were becoming consumed in just entertainment. And so what happened? Inevitably, a society like that is going to implode. It's going to disintegrate. And uh, that's what's happening to our societies. You know? so, so where did the people go? We're not trying to sell them nothing, some magic formula, some magic powder, some magic water, you know, no, 5 or donate 100 and you get this and you get the Holy Spirit and you're all, yeah, you know, reformed. There's nothing like that. You know what it is, Ed? It, it's hard work, right? And, and, and this is the reality. But the thing is that hard work done in the right way is actually what makes us most happy. Hard work is what makes us happy. This instant gratification does not lead to happiness. Yes. Right? Because when you work hard to do something that is worthwhile, and you know it's worthwhile, then you feel profoundly happy and satisfied. When you work hard to achieve something that is going to benefit other human beings, it gives you a profound and real sense of happiness. And these really, this is the key to happiness. The, the key, the key to true happiness is number one, one of the keys to true happiness is gratitude. Gratitude is a key to happiness. Being grateful for the blessings and the bounties and whatever it is that you have in your life, however bad you think your life is, believe me, you can find someone else who is worse off than you. So actually, everybody should take some time to sit down right now and think about all the things that they have. Even Why not even make a list? All the things I have to be grateful for. And no person should forget that they should be grateful to the one who created them. Because true gratitude and the gratitude that is going to make you feel better is one that is displayed. You know, if you should be grateful to your parents for whatever they've done for you, you should be grateful to your husband, to your wife, to your kids, to your mom, your dad, whoever it is, whatever, who has done something for you. Gratitude means recognizing the beautiful things and the blessings you've got in your life and thanking people. D you know, thanking them for what they have given you. How then can you really be profoundly happy if the one who is most worthy of our thanks, the one who has given us everything, our Creator, 
we don't thank God. So gratitude for what we have got, feeling, recognizing the bounties that Allah has given us is the number one key to profound and true happiness. Okay, the next key is doing things to help other people. If you ask most people, and this is all proven by psychological studies, this is not just, you know, you can check this stuff out and this stuff is confirmed by studies, psychological studies that have been done. Most people, if you ask them, what's going to make you happy in life? You know, they'll say money, car, nice house. But the reality is that these things actually have been proven not to make people happy at all. Because what happens is, the moment you have your nice car, you enjoy it for two weeks, and then... It's played out now. now yeah, it's just like it's boring, one. right? Yeah. So then you need something else, right? So what they found is that, in fact, in reality, things do not make people happy. What makes people happy is, number one, experiences. When people experience something profound, right? They go somewhere, they see something, that affects them profoundly. They participate in an activity. They learn a new skill set. Maybe they join your club, right, and learn, learn uh, jiu-jitsu. Yeah. I mean, you know, that is the sort of thing that actually helps to make people profoundly happy when they learn, they learn a new language. They study something they haven't studied before, right? Uh, and the other thing is helping others. Actually, <laughs> it's been proven psychologically that the happiest people and the time that people are happiest is when they are actually involved in helping other human beings. So that's another key to happiness, is to help others. What, of course, we call in Islam giving charity. In, in fact, the Prophet Muhammad, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, said that on every single joint of your body, there is a act of charity that is due on every joint of your body, whatever it is, 360 yes. joints in your body. There is an act of charity that is due on it every day, every day. And that doesn't just mean giving money. You know, charity can be, you know, uh, encouraging the good, forbidding the evil, helping a person load up their car, helping, you know, whatever you, smiling is, yeah. can be charity, you know. So what can be charity is huge, but this whole mode of behavior where you altruist, altruistically, you know, help others. And of course in Islam, we do things for the pleasure of Allah. And it, it, it's not because you want something back. That would ruin the effect of it. You don't do it because you want something back because then this would be selfish. Yes. Right? Then, you know, that only is you wanting something and that's not what gives you the feeling of happiness, right? It's you helping others altruistically and this is why in Islam we have always the intention that whatever you do you do it purely and sincerely and completely seeking the pleasure of Allah we are trying to hit it home bring it home and give that individual we talked about doing good things trying to stay away from is, is it good to say okay you know what that person says you know what okay okay you got me I'll do some good and I'll go from drinking a six-pack to mm -hmm. you know one beer you know, a, 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 a day, but I'll just get drunk on the weekends. You know, where's the start? Where's the limit? Where do yeah. they go from here? Do they, do they drop down? Do they, is there hope for them? If they did all this evil, do they turn back to God? Do they repent? You know, where do they go? We only have a few more minutes because hmm. after, you know, they, they shut us off, we might not have them again. Right. Well, I wanted to finish my point. So the final Please. point, yes. the final third point is that if you want to be happy, behave like a happy person. Smile. Behave. Smile. Smile. Move yourself like a happy person. Smile and you will feel better. Behave like a happy person behaves and you will begin to feel better because the way you behave on the outside affects the way that you, you are. And this, you know, all I can say is when you study Islam, you see these profound truths. You see these things. This is what the religion of Islam teaches. It teaches us that your faith Faith in Islam is not just a set of things that I believe, yeah. it's your actions. This is what we believe in Islam, that faith is the belief of the heart, the profession of the tongue, and the action of the limbs. Mm -hmm. Faith increases when you obey God, and faith decreases when you disobey God. Okay, So this is the reality of faith. So I just encourage everybody to bring happiness into their life, but the best way to bring true, profound happiness, true, profound peace, 
true profound tranquility is by following the guidance that God has given. All the ingredients are there. I mean, I just touched upon three points. There are many, many other things yeah. on the path to peace and happiness, but the solution is Islam. This God you're talking about, can you please describe him? He's the one God, the creator of the universe, the creator of the heavens and the earth, who sustains it and controls it, and we are all under his power and his control. Because also there, before we leave, some people got an idol in their room. They got a pi picture of someone in their room. They say, I'm God, you're God, we're all God. So which God are we talking about? God is about? not like any created thing. God is the creator of all things, and no one has created God. God is the creator, and he is uncreated. He has no beginning and no end. Whereas the universe has a beginning and has an end. We have a beginning, we have an end. We're mortal, we're limited, we're finite. Allah is eternal and uncreated and infinite, the self-sufficient. He needs no one. He needs nothing, but we desperately need him. Closing comments and suggestions one more time before we leave for that truth seeker. I would say pick up the Quran, read it. Read the life of the Prophet Muhammad. May God's peace and blessings be upon him. See for yourself what Islam has to say because it really is the path to happiness and truth. Thank you. May God thank Almighty you. Allah reward you. May Allah bless you. I mean, yeah, thank you. And thank you, thank you again for tuning into the Dean Show. And if you like what we had to say here, if you like, listen to Sheikh Abdul Rahim Green. He has his own section there at the deanshow.com. You can hear some more of his talks, some more of his shows that we've done with him. And we hope that you've sincerely gotten the benefit. And we hope that we get to see you again next time here on the Dean Show. Next week, same time, same channel. Until then, peace be unto you. Mm -hmm. I seek refuge with Allah. I seek refuge with Allah. Have mercy on us. All. Party, party, make a little money and then let loose. But now it's it just getting played out. It's getting played out, but there's still some doubt and confusion. They don't know. They don't have a roadmap. But now somehow they got tuned in to the Dean show. Mm. Maybe a Muslim got them to sit down and they're yeah. thinking serious. So yeah. where do they begin? This is the first step, but where do they go from here? We want to give them some encouragement and some kind of formula that after this show, they'll be excited to live a new life. I think, you know, I, th I think the question, where do they begin, depends on who the they is. It depends on who's out there. And people are so different. Um, they're different in different ways. They're different emotionally. They're different intellectually. They're different spiritually. So, you know... Now today we're going to try to help you for those who are sincere, who are open-hearted, who really want to know the truth, but now there's a lot of confusion. So you might be catching us late at night, early in the morning, in the afternoon, you're away from all the different tantalizations of this life, and you might have just came home from the nightclub, you're getting play it's getting played out, you're getting tired of it. But now there's confusion. Where do you start? How do you find the truth? What's the road map? Where do you begin? So we're going to take baby steps. We're going to take simple steps. No matter what you did in the past, don't worry about it. There's still hope. You're not dead yet. When we come back, we're going to be giving you a formula on how to find the truth, live out the truth, and die in the truth when we come back here on the Dean Show. This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is the thing, 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 you know, a true believer would rather be thrown into the fire than to go back to that condition where they were without the guidance of Allah in their life. So that is how dear and how important, I mean, really in reality, Islam, it is life, Eddie. It's, it's, it's life on a totally different scale. And when you are not connected with your Lord, when you're not connected with your Creator, when you're not remembering Him, knowing Him, it, you might as well be dead. And I'm sure 
many people, they might have been involved in drugs or still are, women might have been getting used by men and abused and going to the nightclubs and, you know, living from Friday to Friday, work, work. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. Salam Eddie. Thank you. You seem a bit quiet today, man. Today, you know, uh, we're going to get excited as we go along, and, but this is a very serious issue. You know, we, we, we really, we, we share because we care. We care about the people. We want the best for them. We certainly do. You know, there, there's a lot of, 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 of doubt that's created about us Muslims. Yeah, but you, you know, know, the Prophet said, none of you truly believe until you love for others what you love for yourself. And the thing that every Muslim, true Muslim, every true believer loves the most, without any doubt, is Islam. Yes. 